The first thing is to think about whether you want to copy your data files or not. And if we start with the no copy idea, this means that we are not going to create a copy of our existing non-CDB data files, but we're going to use the existing files to plug into that pluggable database. So you'd start with your non-CDB, which has its system, sysox, and all your user tablespace data files. And then what you do is set that database read only. We need to do that because when we run dbmspdb.describe to generate this XML manifest file, we need to know that we have a frozen state of the database, that we're not creating new files, for example, that would need to be plugged in. Then you shut down the database, go to your container database, which has to already exist. So this idea of creating a pluggable database assumes the pre-existence of a container database to plug into. And then we use the create pluggable database command. What that does is it reads that XML manifest file, which contains all the information about the file locations for the PDB and other information such as character sets and other important characteristics of that pluggable database. Even within this, you have a couple of options if you want to reuse your data files. You could leave them in place exactly where they are, in which case you would simply specify no copy as part of your create pluggable database statement. If on the other hand, you wanted to move them such as into a directory tree underneath that container database, then you could use the move command, which as you know, on a Linux or any, on pretty much any operating system is going to be much faster than creating a copy of those files. Auto upgrade automates this process entirely. All you need to do is specify that target CDB as part of your auto upgrade config file. By doing this, you will upgrade the database to the new version and plug it in as a container database all with one command. You can also do this with the unplug plug and upgrade approach where you have a PDB that is in one container database. It will then get unplugged, plugged into the destination container and upgraded in that target container database. It does have a few more steps involved when you're going from one system or one server to another. And for that, I'm going to refer you to Mike's blog post on that topic. A few other things to know about the no copy option. One is that remember, data files are getting reused. So there's not really a fallback mechanism to the non-CDB state. Uh, the only fallback mechanism, as you're going to learn later when we delve into that topic, is going to really be data pump to get back to that original state if you're using no copy or move. But the trade-off is that you're making this migration much faster by not having to copy your data files, and also you don't have to duplicate the disk space associated with the database. The other nice thing about this is you can actually uh, migrate across platforms with this option. Uh, by reusing the data files, you can, as long as you're staying on the same end in this, such as going Solaris x86 to Linux or Windows to Linux, for example, you can do this on a same endian cross-platform migration, and that can be really helpful. 